What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. All right. Welcome, everyone. John Corkin here. I am the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast. This is a live episode we're doing here today. And our topic today is how to build thought leadership using a podcast and content marketing. And I really feel so fortunate because due to doing a podcast for many years now, I've been able to connect with and feature hundreds of respected business and thought leaders and mentors, all kinds from Vern Harnish to Peter Diamandis. I've done multiple webinars for Tony Robbins' company, along with my business partner, Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I even been invited to speak on stage alongside Malcolm Gladwell and Shaquille O'Neal. It's all because of podcasting and all because of a deliberate focused strategy. So we're going to talk all about that here today. And with me, of course, Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Thanks, John. I want to call you Dr. Corcoran, although I don't know if we, we can. You have a jurist doctor. But um, yeah, people can check out Inspired Insider uh, as well. And I've done you know probably thousands of, of episodes at this point in podcasts. That's right. And what are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about building thought leadership, which so many people, they realize the, um, the value of being a respected thought leadership, having thought leadership in your field, but they're not sure how to go about it. So we're going to talk about that. But first, before we do, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25 Media, where we help B2B businesses get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with Done For You Podcasts and Content Marketing. You're listening or watching a podcast right now. And if you've ever thought, I want to be a thought leader, or if you ever thought, should I start a podcast? Well, we say yes. I've been saying it for as long as I've been doing a podcast because of the tremendous value that flows to your life. So if you want to learn about more about how to do it, you can go to our website, rise25.com, or email us support at rise25media.com. All right, so... Jeremy. I was just trying to throw you off because I was just trying to make you jump in. I'm going to see if he's, is he going to go back to talking about what we actually do or not? So That's right. You passed the test. You have drilled me well to make sure to not skip over the sponsor message, which we do advocate doing for all of our clients, but three ways to create thought leadership. And it might not be exactly what you think. I think you might be a little bit surprised by some of the strategies for building thought leadership that we advocate. So Jeremy, to start with, of course, this is the most obvious one. Creating a podcast actually generates thought leadership content. It generates a body of work, and that content can be pushed across multiple different channels. So talk a little bit about the importance of that. Yeah, I'll get a little granular for a second with uh, thought leadership because there are a lot of different types of episodes you can create for thought leadership. And we say thought leadership is your internal thought leadership or your team's thought leadership, you know, in, you know, the the... Uh, the other part of that is actually featuring other people. So what we're talking about is not featuring other people, but talking about your thought leadership. And there's a couple of different types that we, we recommend. Um, and when you produce this thought leadership, it can go across, as you know, with the podcast, it goes across, who knows, 10, 15, <laughs> great guess. Thanks, Bradley. Uh, 20 different channels because it goes on pot, you know, it goes on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Go, you can put it on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you want. So it goes across all these channels. But what do you create? Um, also, what we see is it should also help your process of um, in your company, a uh, sales process, even. And you know, you can produce an episode that is talking about. Uh, I was talking to a client. Uh, this morning, and I was saying, do you find yourself repeating the same thing over and over with clients? And if you do, you should produce an episode on it so you don't have to repeat it all the time. You put it across all the channels. People can hear your methodology, and you can then send it to someone who's thinking about working with you and go, hey, before we talk, check out this. This is my perspective on X and they can learn about it and you can then go deeper with that conversation. And that person will be so much more warmed up to your ideas and so much further along in the process when they do get on the phone with you. Um, so that's a great point. And that relates to, we were talking to another client yesterday about this, the importance of integrating, doing a podcast into what you're doing already. It shouldn't be this additional thing that you have to do where you put a ton of work into scripting uh, topic, all that kind of stuff. That's too much work. It needs to 
make your life easier, not harder, or else it won't, you won't be long for doing it. You'll stop after six months because you'll have some, many other things on your plate that you need to do. And so it'll just uh, lower in priority. So that, that was the first point. So the second point is that to build thought leadership is you can repurpose that content. So you can take it and put it into other forms of media, such as interactive audios, which you share on social media, or you can take podcasts. And one thing you've done really well, Jeremy, is helping people to structure their ideas. And then what you create ultimately is a book, right? Because it becomes a table of contents yeah. for your book. Yeah. I mean, so the first point is you can, you can use the podcast and put it all these channels, then you could take the content and do other things with that content, like you mentioned. So you could take um, snippets of it, put it on social media. You can actually, if you structure it properly, if you structure your thought leadership properly um, in an outline, you can end up um, at the end result being a book. Um, and we've, we've structured that out with clients. So then, Hey, after this number of episodes, you're going to have a book and also you can structure it out into a course that you end up giving away, uh, to your clients, or you can end up selling it. Yeah. Well. A digital course can serve men multiple different purposes. It, it can be the top of the funnel. It can be something that you can use to reactivate people that you haven't talked to for a while. It can be something that you gift. It can be something you sell and generate revenue from. It can be something that helps you to net, you know, network with new people. There's so many different purposes for it. Same thing with a book as well. Um, third point, you can use the podcast to connect to new channels where you can share your thought leadership further and build that thought leadership further in front of new audiences. So for example, you could use the podcast to connect with the organizers of a conference, either the, the person who organizes it, the board members, volunteers, who names it, you, you name it, to, so that you can get invited to speak at that conference. You can use the podcast to connect with other podcasters so that you can be a guest on other podcasts, which is a great way to build your audience. You can also use the podcast to connect with mainstream media or reporters become known in your field as an expert in your field. I've seen that happen so many different times where people get quoted. It's become much more common. You see people quoted in mainstream media um, and, and their podcast is mentioned. So Jeremy, your thoughts on yeah, that using you, the podcast to connect. You mentioned, um, yeah, I mean, you could use it for so many because once you, once you're out there, and sharing your methodology, sharing your thought leadership, you know, people pick up on it and it can, you know, like you said, you could be asked to present uh, webinars to different companies, right? You've, you've been featured on different webinars. We've done webinars for, for various companies, uh, Tony Robbins group and sales, the division of Salesforce, um, contactually, did, I think you did one for AWeber. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, you did one for AWeber. And um, also speakers. Uh, I don't know if there's a fun story behind the Malcolm Gladwell Shaquille O'Neal. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember that that story. Just just that I was invited to do oh, okay. it, and, I, and I'm a big fan of Malcolm Gladwell. So you know, it was it was an honor to be invited. I ultimately yeah. didn't didn't take them up on that on it. But uh, well, I mean, nice you have four kids. I don't know how you do anything, and you don't have time exactly. to go to the bathroom let alone <laughs> speak at a conference. Exactly, exactly. So then the and then just to let wrap up the uh, one more bonus point and this is a slightly different point. So the previous point was using the podcast connect with new channels so that you can share your thought leadership through those channels whether it's speaking on stage, speaking on a podcast, getting quoted in books. That's another one. I've, you know, interviewed people on my podcast who are authors and then they they're writing their next book and they reach back out to me and then they feature me in their book which has happened with you as well. So it's really cool strategy as well. And then the fourth piece is networking with other thought leaders who then will develop the respect for you and what you do. And when you think about it, thought leadership often is developed in this sense. Other experts in the field begin mentioning you as a, fe as a peer, as a, a fellow respected thought leadership in the field. And it's very difficult to become a respected thought leader in your field without having that respect. And so you can very much go about earning it, assuming you have something important to say, significant to say in your field, but you can go about earning it by developing, nurturing these relationships with the others who are already respected thought leaders in your particular field. Any thoughts on that, Jeremy? No, I think, I think you're exactly right. I mean, I think, um, you know, it's all about relationships in the end, you know, forming relationships with and giving to, for us, it's about relationships and giving to those relationships. How do we, we're always thinking, how do we give first? How do we give to those relationships? How do we help those people with, and serve them with whatever they're working on 
you know, in their life or business. You know, I have people all the time, they say, oh, I have this, you know, that's in a side comment. I have this health issue I'm dealing with or whatever. And I happen to have expertise in that. And, and people say, oh, I have this, you know, this legal thing and, and you happen to have expertise in that. So it's, it may not even be serving that person in, in what we do as a business, but just as a human being, the human being. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny because there are those who think that in order to develop thought leadership, you need to go retreat to your writing cabin or your office and spend months, years generating content, writing maybe books, writing articles, churning out that kind of stuff. And that might work in certain fields that might work maybe in academia still. But the approach that we advocate is more of a people based approach, which is to build those relationships and through the building of those relationships and at the same time, concurrently generating the content, you will become that respected thought leader and you will have such a stronger network through that process. Yeah. I think to that point, John, when we think of it, it's, you know, you know, we called rise 25 because we believe in rising tides lift all boats. And so there's other people who really have thought leadership around relationships that we are huge advocates for. And, and we're talking about them and their work and promoting their work um, and not just us. So the thought leadership is also sharing where some of our ideas and some of the people we respect, you know, like, you know, we respect, um, you know, John Rulin and what he does with with his, you know, giftology and his company. We respect Ian Garlic and what he does with helping people get their, you know, case stories out there and his podcast. So there's so many people we learn from and we, um, you know, perpetuate what they're working on. Absolutely. Well, just to wrap things up, Jeremy, where can people go to learn more about yourself and Rise 25. Yeah, they can go to rise25.com uh, or you can go to the about page there and it kind of has, we have a, a video that we created and you uh, kept in some of the outtakes in that video. Uh, <laughs> so it's pretty uh, funny. I didn't realize that you put those in there. So you can go to rise25.com, check out more. There's a video of us talking about how do you get ROI with a podcast. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a peach If you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand